Hey guys, Nick Drosos, Dr. Andrew Steinberg, and welcome to another episode of Have the Balls to Talk About It. Actually, we're going to talk about the, the broken penis to talk about it. The broken penis, no. Uh, we're talking about Peyronie's disease, and I think we've done a show explaining it a little bit, and we'll get quickly into that, but really I want to talk about some of the myths uh, that people come in... Uh, do you treat a lot of disease, Andrew? I do, I do, I do. And actually, that's a good segue because my first myth was Peyronie's disease is a rare disease. So, um, first of all, Peyronie's disease is when you get um, scar tissue collagen formation causing a curve erection, often painful, uh, often curve can be significant and debilitating. Um, but, you know, you asked me if I treat a lot. Yeah, Peyronie's disease is not a rare disease. Uh, some places have it estimated up to 10% of, wow. uh, of men will have some evidence of Peyronie's disease. A, a quick question, how do you get it? Like it's, uh, you know, and probably some, I guess why it's hard to estimate these things because it's estimated between 1% to 10% is probably because some people don't even realize they have it and don't oh. present with these issues. And they go off and unreported or they'll present their doctor and the doctor will say, you know, push them aside and not, and they'll left be undiagnosed. Um, probably often untreated because many doctors don't necessarily how to treat it properly and it's not a, a very sexy uh, kind of case for do for mm. urologists to treat and so on so I think it's under diagnosed uh, and well under treat under diagnosed and, and under treated as well um, so another thing because I see younger guys coming to me and saying uh, you know I have all these symptoms and talk about Peyronie they say well isn't that just for older men uh, you know, Peyronie's can happen in really any age. I guess there's a cluster in the 30s and 40s, but you know, I've seen guys in the 20s get it, uh, and I've seen guys in the in the 70s get it, 70s and 80s get it. So I think it kind of crosses the spectrum of of, of ages. Um, it's uh, some you know how it's caused. I guess one of the things mm. it's caused by bad sexual activity or, or something. Um, you know, one of the theories behind it is that it's it's caused by trauma. So we do have guys who have a history of, of trauma, either a penile fracture, a penile injury, or some men who inject themselves in the same spot for, for with a medication to get erection, and the continuous injection will lead to a reaction. But essentially, it's it's it's. But most men don't come in with a cause. And I say, do, do you remember any injury to your penis? No, not really. It just started to, to get these symptoms. But it, it can't just happen on its own. Like something has to trigger it. Well, we don't know the trigger in many men. So, I mean, we do know that there's a genetic predisposition because men who get Peyronie's are more likely to have Dupuytren's contractures, which are similar collagen-like formations in the tendons in the hand oh, okay. and plantar fas fasciitis on the bottom oh. of the foot. So if you have one, you're more likely to have the other ones. So there is a genetic predisposition to it. And, uh, you know, your idea of something had to happen. So one of the theories is, is micro trauma. There's some sort of injury or some sort of trauma happening that you don't remember or, or it was so small that it's happening. And then there's an increased healing uh, or exaggerated healing, which is the laying down. of. I mean, normally when you get cut, you have some collagen being laid down to support. But, uh, but this is like an increase or an exaggerated response. So... But again, most men we don't know, so it's it, it's hard to, it's hard to attribute it to to a specific event for sure. Uh, I've asked if it's contagious, if it's a, a sexually transmitted disease or something. It's clearly it's not. Yeah. It's not something that you can get from a, a woman or another man or give to another woman or another man for sure. Um, also, uh, is it caused by masturbation? That's something that I've seen and, and asked. Uh, you know, I guess. I guess that comes from the days of, you know, masturbation yeah. causes you to go blind or grow hair on your hands or, <laughs> or, or anything. So no people who masturbate very little and have but a normal... But can, can it at all or no? No. No, okay. No, no, I mean, it's nothing related to, to yeah. masturbation as much as it's not related oh, to... But if somebody's I mean, going hard at it or like, I mean, cause some trauma to it... I mean, I guess any rougher sexual activity that causes an injury can potentially yeah. lead to that, yes. Masturbation in particular, um, no. Okay. No. Um, it's always painful uh, because some guys come in and say, well, that's Peyronie's disease. And they say, but yeah, but I have no pain. I have no, 
uh, you know. Uh, I, so we, there's two phases of Peyronie's. There's the initial early acute phase where people often have a lot of pain. Um, you know, the four kind of questions I ask for, for guys that have Peyronie's and it helps me guide um, how to treat them is one, is there a curve? Two, is there pain? Three, is there a plaque, that firm collagen nodule? And four, is there dysfunction, erectile mm. dysfunction? But you can have Peyronie's without having one of these mm. or two of these things or three of these things. So you have guys that come in with a, a curve on their penis that wasn't there a year ago, but they still get you know, rock hard uh, erections and they're still able to have sex and it doesn't really hurt them. So, you know, that's, that's still Peyronie when we do it, uh, either you can feel a little, the collagen deposits or you can see it on ultrasound. Um, but you could see it right away, right? Can somebody see it right away? Would you have mean? it? Like visually, if, if I look at my penis, could all, like you can tell right away, okay, you have Peyronie's. Well, that's why they present to me. Okay. Yeah, because they have something, you know, typically, sometimes, uh, usually I, I, I will see pain and curvature. Uh, the pain, again, is usually in the acute early phase, not in the later phases. Um, but I do have some people who say, well, I don't feel anything, but I notice it getting more and more curved. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 the, and sometimes I feel I see the opposite. You know, they, they don't, they come in because they have pain and I examine them and I feel a Peyronie's plaque and it's classical, um, but they don't have much of a curve. Mm -hmm. Uh, they also may not have a curve. They may have a, uh, an indentation or an hourglass deformity. Um, instead of a curve. So I guess it depends where the plaque is on the penis. Most of them are on the upper surface and that's why it causes a curve upward. Right. But if you have it on the lower or the lateral surfaces, it can cause left or right. Or if you can have it in sort of in the middle on the inside, it can cause that hourglass deformity. And those are a little bit harder to, to treat, but um, you know, so not everybody has pain and it could still be Peyronie's and not everybody has a curve and it could still have some of the other symptoms. Um, some people come in and, and are devastated, like, uh, I'm going to have to have surgery and this is going to ruin my sex life and it's because they hear all the things. Uh, we can, uh, I mean, sometimes it gets worse and better on its own and there's many things out there that we're doing that can help, uh, that can help. So I would actually say the opposite. The vast majority of my patients don't go on to need surgery. I don't do that particular surgery. My colleague in the office does. The amount of times in, in a year, and I see a fair amount of Peyronie's patients. I probably see, you know, between one and five a week, which is you know a fairly number over, over the course of a year. Um, the vast majority, I don't remember the last time I sent one, maybe one a year, two a year uh, for, for surgery. Um, so, and, and it has to do with one, keeping expectations appropriate and two, finding out what the real problem is. So expectations meaning we're going to treat you and our goal is to get you as good as possible, not to get you what you were before this because to get you perfect and how you were exactly before is hard. To get zero so curve it never and goes no to plaque, back to 100%? it rarely goes oh, wow. back to 100%. Okay? And then the other one is, okay, well, what are your expectations? Because I had a couple that came in, I was treating them. Uh, I was treating you know, his, his penis. The couple were sitting in front of me and he goes, it's time for surgery. So I said, okay. I mean, he goes, well, I mean, look, he showed me a picture. Uh, I mean, this is a bad curve. I said, okay, but how are your erections? He said, no, they're, fun, they're strong, they're strong, and, but, but look at that curve. And I said, well, are you guys able to have sex? Is there anything that you can do in terms of penetration and, and, and anything that goes, no. And I, and I looked at the wife and I said, is there anything that bothers you about this? And she said, no. So I said, well, why do you want oh, surgery? Yeah, I mean, question. you know, it's, it's, so it, it looks a little curved. It looks a little bit awkward, but it doesn't hurt. You have great erections. You're able to have any kind of sex you want, penetration or, you know, from, from any angle you want. Um, and uh, so why, you know, go for the risks that can potentially come out of yeah. surgery? Now, if you had a bad curve and you weren't able to have penetration for many reasons, okay, so then surgery is a good option and there's less invasive surgeries and there's more depending on what the issue is, how much of a curve you are, where the plaque is and so on. But typically, if it's just a curve you need to be corrected, you, uh, you know, and the surgery is a good option, but it, 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 it's more, way more on the rare side of things than, than, uh, than needing a surgery for sure. 
I, I guess the next myth that always results in erectile dysfunction, I kind of just answered. So the answer is no. I have many patients who have, or who have full-blown Peyronie. You can see it, you can feel it, but their erections are still hard. Or they may have a little bit of softness beyond that. But it doesn't stop the blood flow? Like It can. It, it can, can but not necessarily. Okay. Okay, so it's not it's not because you have Peyronie's that you will have significant okay. erectile dysfunction. Okay. okay, it is common with Peyronie's, but it's not it's not a necessity. Um, some people come in thinking it's cancer. They feel something hard. They have a lump under the skin. They said, "Holy shit, I got cancer." So, you know, and when I reassure people, I said, first of all, this is Peyronie's disease. It is not cancer, and second of all. The vast majority of penile cancers are things that grow outside. They start off in little genital warts or condylomas and they grow outside. Um, things I've never seen a case of cancer being sort of deep on the inside of the penis. Yeah. Uh, so if you feel this firmness or anything, come get a check out, but don't lose sleep that this is a penile cancer. Uh, and I think that, you know, there's nothing that can be done about this is another myth and that comes often from the doctors that they're seeing. You when know, the doctor tells them? Yeah, yeah, you know, go home and, uh, you know, there are treatments, there are devices, and we've done a show on yeah, this, that pull on the penis, yeah. the penile traction devices. There are some oral medications, even Cialis, Tadalafil, um, seems to have some effect on it. Uh, of course, there's surgery. There's injections of a medication called Zyaflex, which is collagenase. It, it dissolves the collagen. Unfortunately, that's only available in the United States. It was taken off the market for, I believe, financial reasons everywhere in the world besides the United States. It's quite expensive. And there's some investigational experimental therapies that we do, which is, we've talked about this, which is the PRP, the platelet yeah. therapy, uh, where we take blood from your arm and inject the, the playlist. The we've been having, I, I, you know, this is not a scientific study. We do a lot of that and we've been having some great results with that. So I've been super happy. But the doctors so, I'm assuming are not urologists. They are, they are, they are. but many urologists don't take an interest into, into this and that evolves over their career as things improve and change and so on. They're not aware of some of the newer treatments. Oh, wow. If someone's interested in prostate cancer and kidney cancer or infertility, they're not going to be up to date or experts on on this. So um, I have taken an interest in it and so I guess maybe maybe that's why I see more patients yeah. than the average and maybe I have more treatments to offer than the average but there are definitely treatments to treat the pain, the curve and the erectile dysfunction if either of those or all of those uh, are there. So you know a lot to do, a lot of myths that we need to try to dispel and so people can get the right information out there. Um, so if you feel a lump or sudden erectile dysfunction or sudden or gradual curvature of the penis, uh, get it checked out. If you're not happy with their answer, get it checked out by someone who is an expert in the field. And as weird as it sounds, dick pics are great. Take a picture when you're erect, because that's the only time you can see it, uh, you know, from above, from the sides, to really so you can come in and say, here, to explain where the angle is, it's very Send it helpful. Send gets them all the time. <laughs> That's the myths of Peyronie's. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Have the Boss to Talk About It. Make sure to subscribe, hit the bell.